Well, I, I actually uh, get asked a lot, you know, when I got involved in the paranormal. And, and the one thing that's kind of funny is I don't really think I got involved in the paranormal. The paranormal involved me. I've been followed and uh, having things around me since I was a kid. About the age of uh, two and a half, three years old, my grandmother started visiting me after she had passed away. Uh, I grew up in a haunted house. About the age of 12, I saw Bigfoot out in Foley, Alabama at my grandparents' uh, location. UFOs over Trout Lake, Washington about six years ago. So I've, I've had a good chance to run the whole gambit and uh, experience a lot of the things people would call paranormal. Uh, Tim and I, uh, the producer and co-host of the show, we went to college together at Winona State University and worked in uh, college radio and uh, remained long, lifelong friends after that. Tim stayed in radio, I went back into the world of sales and uh, we stayed in touch. And about seven years ago, uh, there was an opening at uh, the station he was working on, KLBB which was AM 1470 at the time. And he said, hey, listen, we've got, uh, we've got these shows and there's an hour-long spot open on Sunday nights and they need to fill. Do you want to do a radio show together? I said, sure, let's do something. He goes, well, what do you want to talk about? He said, why don't we do a paranormal radio show, aside from Coast to Coast, which is probably the you know, most popular paranormal radio show on the planet. There was nothing else offered for people. It was one way, one look, and that's it. And, you know, Tim and I have known each other for 20 years and had a good friendship and goofy personalities together, so we thought maybe we could bring some fun to the paranormal, learn along with our listeners. And uh, on January 1st, 2006, we, we aired our very first episode with Jason Hawes from the TV series Ghost Hunters as our uh, very first guest. The show progressed from AM 1470 to quite a large streaming audience off of our darknessradio.com website. And then uh, about three, three and a half years ago, we got picked up here at the Twin Cities News Talk Station. And uh, this has been our home ever since. Very cool. So tell me, um, let's back up just a little bit. Um, what was the, you said that uh, your first experience when, was when you were two and a half, three years old. What mm -hmm. happened that uh, first uh, started uh, the ball rolling with your first experience? Well, again, these are stories that were passed down to me. You know, I have no memory of this being that little, but after my grandmother had passed away, uh, I would go stay at my grandfather's house and visit, and um, I would stay in her bedroom. And after uh, she had passed away, my grandfather kept the room pretty much the way it was, and I would go in there and spend the night, and my mom came to pick me up, and I would tell her stories about my grandmother coming to read to me and talk to me and visit with us. And, uh, you know, she'd tell me, well, honey, remember she's in heaven? Yes, I know, Mom. And, you know, she was telling me stories and just kind of having a little conversation with my mom about these visitations. And then my mom eventually broke down and told my aunt about it. I had described to a T what my grandmother had been buried in. And it was a closed casket. Only two people knew what she had been buried in. Oh, that's interesting. The, right, aside from the uh, uh, mortuary workers, my aunt and my grandfather were the only ones that knew what, what she was buried in. And I had pinpointed it down to even the fact that they had removed her false teeth for burial. Mm -hmm. So my aunt then relayed the story about uh, having been... Uh, I don't want to put this. She, she received three phone calls from my grandmother after she passed away. Oh, really? Right. So, you know, it was those stories that as I grew up, I started to hear and realize, wow, there's something else going on here. And my mom and my aunt were huge readers of anything paranormal. You know, any book by Hans Holzer or you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren, uh, D. Scott Rogo, um, you know, any of the, the big guys, they, they all had the books laying around. So I was always going through the bookshelves and reading these. I loved real accounts of ghost stories and grew up in a haunted house in Illinois. So, I, you know, I just, it was always kind of around me. That's interesting. Now, you don't have any uh, memory of those early encounters. You just have the, the, um, the accounts from your family members about that. Do you remember when hearing about the, the stories from your parents, do you, yeah, did you have a creeped out feeling about it, or did you have a feeling of peace? What were you no, feeling? Because it was had? always about my grandmother, you know, and I, I, I loved my grandparents and was very close to them, so it never really freaked me out. And growing up, you know, it was just a nice notion that they had been there and that they were still visiting me after they died. Mm -hmm. So having my grandmother come visit me was, you know, that, that wasn't something to strike terror. It wasn't like I saw this, you know faceless creature standing in my room, you know, with horns and a, a pitchfork, that, you know, <laughs> might have had a totally different uh, outcome for the way I, you know, perceive the paranormal, but it's never been a thing of fright for me. And then having a house where I grew up in and, and hearing weird things and, you know, it sounds like some Tell us about the stairs. house then. Do you, uh, when was, the, when was that and, and uh, you were living in Illinois at the time? Right. I grew up in uh, Medina, Illinois, and we lived, uh, lived there. Moved in when I was about, I think, 
four or five years old and uh, live there all the way. My parents still reside in the same house, but, uh, you know, you just hear weird things. You know, you, you'd be home alone in the house and you'd hear footsteps going upstairs or sometimes you'd hear people talking down in the basement. You'd go downstairs thinking my parents were home or somebody was there watching TV and there was nothing going on. And my parents would hear the same things. So, again, it was never anything malevolent or, or creepy. I was just aware that other things were going on around me. Yeah. And uh, and then I had probably, which to, you know, I am 44 years old, my creepiest experience was just walking down the street. I was going to a friend's house, and as I was walking by this house, I, I looked up, and there was a gentleman inside the picture window, and he was just staring out the window. He had his arms folded behind his back, just looking out the window. And this was the 70s. We didn't have cable TV with 9,000 channels. So people actually used to watch the neighborhood and see what was going on. Sure. And, you know, I was watching him, and I saw him through the window, and I took a few more steps, and I turned and looked, and now all of a sudden he was outside of the house. So he would have had to go through the plate glass window, through the sidewalk, over a set of hedges, and now he's standing in front of the hedges. Wow. And I, I turned my head, and I was trying to process what I just saw, and I turned back around, and now he's halfway in the middle of the yard. Mm -hmm. And it's not like he's running and stopping. He just was there. Right. And then I walked a little bit further and turned around, and now he was on the corner of the yard, and that's when I took off like a bat out of hell. And, you know, at the age of 44, when I go visit my parents' house, I'll still take the long way around so I don't have to pass that creepy house. Uh, when was that? That was, uh, well, I was probably about 12 years old. 12 years old? Mm -hmm. Was that an older home that you were living in? Did you find out if they had any history with it? You know, it was, I believe, one owner before us, and nobody died in the house. As a matter of fact, I still know the family that owned it before us. There's really no explanation for the things that took place in our place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were some things. I was a fan sleeper. So, as many of us were back in the 70s, we didn't, didn't have central air in all sure. our houses. So we'd turn the fans on and sleep. You know, I slept down in the basement bedroom. And I would notice with the sound of the fan on, you'd hear what sounded like a TV on in another room. And I'd, I'd well, who's still up? And I'd turn off the fan and the sound would stop. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to my neighbors and some of the other kids, and they all complained about the same thing. But what was funny is, you know, we, we all saw poltergeist, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you disturb the ancient Indian burial ground and all hell breaks loose. Sure. Well, we figured we must live in, you know, lived in the in the territory of the party and us ghosts on the planet because we would hear conversations, music, clinking of glasses, laughter. I, it was always like there was a party going on just outside of earshot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just literally, we used to laugh about the party ghosts in our town. Now, growing up and understanding a little bit better how sound works, right at the end of our street was the Medina Golf Course, which is sure. one of the biggest PGA golf courses out there. And they have a party every night for mm -hmm. something. So sound travels, right? And we hear it, and when we're talking to one another, boom, goes in there, hits the little hammer, taps the drum, gives us the sound we know what we're listening to. But what happens is my voice will continue past Mally, and it'll just get loopier and bigger. And, you know, without having something to strike against, you lose the tonality of, of the sound. Well, using fans, what we were doing was we were creating a white noise template. So we had this shh noise. The sound waves were coming and striking the back of the fan blades, which then was, you know, working like a speaker. So it was creating a template again for the sound to be heard, but because it was so loopy and so wide, you weren't pulling really concise, tight sound as though you were right there. Mm -hmm. You were just picking up the resonance, the, the tinking of the glasses, the high parts of the music, the laughter, the loud and, and sharp noises that you, you know, would travel better. And, um, you know, that's what we all realize is, boy, we were living at the end of a party central with the, the golf course, and it was really only when we had the fan going that we could hear all the activity taking place. That's interesting. Would you call yourself a skeptic, or are you a believer, or a little bit of both? I'm a skeptical believer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I grew up having experiences my whole life. I just, I question my own experiences. I question the experiences of people around me. You know, I, I think it's important to remain level-headed and cool about these type of things. And, and you know, it's, it's fun and it's easy to get excited about it. But then I want to get to the real answer of, well, what are we experiencing here? Right. And, you know, there's, there's weird stuff from my youth that I always, you know, as I learn more about the paranormal and I hear about things like the Frank's box or, uh, 
you know, these spirit boxes. Mm -hmm. I realized, you know, I used to have a radio that I'd be playing in my room and I'd be listening to the CB radio scanner in my room and all of a sudden I'd hear voices come out that seemed to interact with me. And I'd be playing with my G.I. Joes and flip them off my bed and, ah, boom, he'd hit the ground. And then I'd hear a voice come through the radio. That looks like it hurt. And I'd stop playing and I'd look around my room like, did I just hear that? And, and I never put two and two together because I just figured it was coincidence. But I remember hearing these things, and it would weird me out enough that I'd reach over and turn off the radio after a while. Mm -hmm. Whether it was coincidence or not, I just didn't like it. Uh, but now I start hearing about these things like the spirit boxes and the, the Frank's boxes and shack hacks and, you know, all of these different tools. And the way they're communicating are through radio frequencies. So it's kind of an intriguing different deal. But now I look back and I start realizing how many more, quote-unquote, paranormal experiences I may have had growing up that I didn't realize at the time. Sure. 